let's look at this bottom section of our periodic table in the what we've called uh, the F block. Right? Call this the F block, right? And if you remember, we when we did uh, electron configuration, we were filling F orbitals as each one of these electrons came to play. Well, there's not a lot to say about this because uh, this group right here is called um, right here is called the rare Earths. Okay, and those are the rare Earths. Let me move that for you. Okay, and, and that's this the lanthanides, the lamp. Oops. The net lanthanides used to be called the rare earths, and I believe it was because at one time they were rare, and they found them in the earth. But that's not necessarily true anymore. They're not that rare. Okay? And then the actinides uh, are special because if you look at it past plutonium right here, look at the atomic weight of all those. Okay? For the most part, there's no decimal number. There's one with americium and einsteinium. But uh, a lot of whole numbers there. And the reason for that is because those are the man-made elements. Okay, from pretty much Neptunium on. One second. All right, so let's look at exactly the two things I want you to know about. Okay, the lanthanides shiny like all metals, and uh, they react similarly to the alkaline earth, earth metals. And I already said they were the rare earths. And then the actinides, which is the second group, those all have uh, an unstable nucleus and they're radioactive. And what that means is if you can imagine a nucleus, okay, and here's another example of awesome Richardson art, okay, there, let's just pretend that's a nucleus there. Uh, every so often, the nucleus would be throwing off some energy in the form of an alpha wave, a gamma, ooh. I don't know if my gamma is going to be hmm, alpha, gamma, or a beta. Beta is the only one I think I can do right. Okay, so they're 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 throwing off particles out of the nucleus, and we'll get into nuclear chemistry a little later. So that's uh, the actinides and the lanthanides. All right. So we're moving along. We've talked about hydrogen, talked about the transition metals, now talked about the F-block, the lanthanides, and actinides. And that brings us to our next section, which has to do with just properties of metals. Now, most elements are metals, all right? And if you look on your periodic table, you will see a stair step, and I'll try to trace it right here. Well, actually, you can see it very well. See this line right here? This stair step going right here? Okay. That stair step, and you have one on your periodic table, really separates, and I believe it kind of goes right here. Okay, uh, that stair step really separates the metals from the nonmetals. So what that means is, from here on, going this way, and then of course this whole group, they are all metals. All right. So the majority of the periodic table is uh, made of metals, and that's of course a, a pretty important thing. Well, let's go back to our slide here. And so next, oops, gosh, haven't done that for a while. Here we go. Let me If you know anything about metals, you know that they're shiny. Uh, this is gold right here. Um, I think that was, I don't remember what that one is. Oh, that's gold. This is copper, I think. That's aluminum, copper. Oops. These might be two examples of, you know what? As bad as this sounds, I can't remember what these are. I made this slide quite a while ago. But I know they're all metals and they're definitely shiny. So if we know anything about metals, they're shiny. What do you know that's another thing about metals? Well, you know they're really good conductors of heat and electricity, right? Metals are uh, what make all our wires. Metals are what make all our pipes. And they conduct heat and electricity very well. In other words, if I put a nail in a Bunsen burner, you don't want to hold the other end of the nail because that heat transfers really well to that. Okay. Another property of metals is that they are ductile. Okay. Now, what ductility means is they can be squeezed into a wire. In other words, that's why we have copper wires because you can take a metal and you can mush it so that um, you can kind of squeeze it into a wire. And the, if any of you have ever played with the Play-Doh set that uh, was like the barber set, my kids had that a while ago, where you put the Play-Doh in and you shoved it up and these little stringy hairs came out, well, that's the same thing. 
metals can be uh, squeezed into a wire. And then the last thing about metals that's kind of cool. Ah! Did it again. Here, let me just... Uh, metals are malleable. And they can be hammered into or rolled into sheets. And the example of that, of, of course, is good old aluminum foil right there. And this is gold leaf. Which they put on really nice books. And uh, some artists will uh, coat their their carvings or things in gold leaf and make it really nice. But you can uh, roll them into sheets or uh, hammer them into sheets. And so they're malleable. These two terms right here are two terms I want you to know. Duck, think like a duck, like duct work, and malleable, think uh, flat. All right, so those are two things I, I want you to know. And then the last little section about our uh, most elements are metals is another kind of, this is just a little aside thing, is metals can be made into alloys. Very few things that we use in real life are just a pure metal. Okay, Metals mixed together give new properties that are different from their individual elements. For example, if I just take iron and I were to try and use it for things that we use iron for, iron turns out to be pretty brittle. Um, but if you mix it with a little bit of carbon, now you have steel. If you mix iron, um, iron, carbon, and chromium, you get stainless steel, which is really shiny and, uh, and corro uh, resists corrosion. Okay, Bronze is copper and tin. Wait, I'm sorry, copper and zinc. And brass is copper and tin. And then aluminum alloy. These are really nice wheels. You may have friends that have these kind of wheels on their car. You may have these on your on your car. You may wish you had those on your car. But they're made, not made out of pure aluminum. They've got some magnesium in there as well as aluminum and a, and a bunch of other ones. So what uh, metallurgists do is they kind of combine el uh, metals in certain groups and certain percentages to find out what's the best property we can get out of this metal. Okay, and so that's alloys. And that is it for section 4.2. Hope this uh, worked out. Again, like always, if you have any questions, bring them to me, and we'll talk about it.